You guys been asking for the merch, and Wave 2 is finally here. If you want to go look at it, man, it's in the description box below. Go ahead and click that link. Don't miss out. Pre-order is going on for three weeks. Enjoy the video. <laughs> Woo. Look, man. Hey, I'm going to say it like this. First of all, um... Happy, happy day. Happy, happy Monday to everyone out there, man. I hope you guys are having a blessed week. Hope you guys are having a blessed, um, you know, uh, a blessed holiday. We're getting towards the holiday season, so hope you guys are going to have a blessed holiday. Hope you guys are keeping your head strong going in 2020. I know that it's about to end um, a historical, you know, tragic year that we've had. Everything has, from, from the start to finish, has been wild. So hopefully as we finish the year up, man, we can definitely finish it on a strong point. Throw our heads up and hopefully with some good music. Now, as you can see in the title, man, this is literally about mostly Kid Cudi, but we will also address Drake. I will try to split it up. You guys can find it for the people that want Kid Cudi and for the people that want Drake. Uh, first thing we're going to talk about, though, is Kid Cudi, man. Kid Cudi has announced Man on the Moon 3. Now, a lot of you guys know that I'm an avid Kid Cudi listener. I, at this point, I wouldn't say I'm a... I wouldn't say I'm a stan, but I definitely love me some Cuddalicious, you know what I'm saying? I, I, I talk about it all the time. Uh, I love the way uh, Kid Cudi, the way I, you know, kind of just everything that he speaks on, I've experienced. Uh, Kid Cudi was basically the first album that I got a super, you know, high to. That was the album I used to smoke to. Um, Kid Cudi got me through a lot of dark times in my life. So Kid Cudi is always going to have a special place in my heart. Kid Cudi is the example of why you should make music for your fans because in the long run, while you may not be at the top of the game, you will stay consistent and you will be able to make a living for the rest of your life as long as you bid 10,000. 10, I always tell you guys that. 10,000 10, fans over 1 million subscribers. And you can do it. For a lot of people that say my channel is dying, I got to tell you guys. If you guys didn't know, I made six figures this year. And I know, and I'm going to get my hand tattooed because... That's something I wanted to re that I wanted to share with you guys. I didn't. I was gonna do it for my 200k video, but uh, just for the people that are out there that's saying, "Dev, your channel died," I'm perfectly fine because my 10,000, my 10,000 real ones, they hold it down for me. All right, it's not quite 10,000. It's like 6,000, 5,000, but they're holding it down for me. So I got to say, I got the gazimus. The channel is not dead. It's just on a slow climb. Let's get that out the way. I had to get a little light flex there. But thank you guys for uh, so much. Thank you guys for that. I got to say, man, Kid Cudi, like I said, uh, I know I owe you guys Man on the Moon 1. And we all know how legendary the Man on the Moon series is. Man on the Moon 1 for me, man, is an amazing album. I will get that up this week. I promise you. I, I know I've said that at this point, it's like the 88 glam meme of my channel. I will get that up for the throwback for the Patreons. I will get that up. All right. Th let's just put that out there. Second of all, Man on the Moon 1, Man on the Moon 2. Get in the comments below. Let me know which one's your favorite. All right. For me, man, Man on the Moon 2 hits a little different when I get high. Well, when I used to get high. As you guys know, I don't smoke anymore. I stopped smoking four years ago. Uh, when you when you get high, Man on the Moon 2 had tracks like um, These Worries, uh, Don't Play This Song, All Along, um, Ghost. So I think like Man on the Moon 2 definitely hits me more when I'm high. But Man on the Moon 1 just had more memorable tracks for me as being the first time we were kind of introduced to Cuddy. Day and Night, um, you know, Higher, uh, Heart of the Lion, you know, we got tracks like that. All of these tracks, man, just have a certain memory in mind. Now, I was kind of shocked by when I saw the trailer because I did not believe that Man on the Moon 3 was coming. Because this is my theory, all right? I had a theory already, and I said that Passion, Pain, Demon Slaying has become my favorite Kid Cudi album, all right? Man on the Moon was prior, but man, uh, Passion, Pain, Demon Slaying is my favorite Kid Cudi album to date. I've solidified that i decided that that's what it is point blank period there is no more argument i just feel like for it to be the length that it was from start to finish only having two bad tracks on there for me if you guys can guess it i'll give you a heart for it to be as consistent as it was and to grow on me how it did i thought that it was just an amazing album man because it represented when you really listen to the lyrics i f i say this all the time and i honestly still think and i will put it on the grave that Swim in the Light is still, by far, my favorite Kid Cudi track to date, right? If you don't understand what Kid Cudi... I remember I had this conversation. I always talk to my younger crowd, especially. I always shout out E-Money. 
She E Money is a 15 year old uh, guy from Manhattan that supports me. He's in my Discord, and he's a kid though. And he's already said I don't resonate with anything they're saying. You know, like swimming the light, going through the drug issues, going through all that stuff, going through that in your lifetime. That's something that you can't go through unless you have experience, right? Obviously, as a 15 year old, you're not gonna experience that yet for the next decade. Even for the next decade, E Money wouldn't be as old as me, right? So when you think about that, man, I always say that swimming the light. And passion, pain, demon slaying, it's so crazy because the way it's it's his passion, it's his growth, and it's basically how his mindset is now. If you guys know Cuddy and you are a fan of Cuddy, then you will understand his journey from being the star, being Man on the Moon 1, getting all the drugs, the drugs, and then going through the dark depression of Indica, of Wizard. You know, we got all these, and then going from Speedy Bullet to Hell. Sorry, Cuddy, as much as I fuck with you, Speedy Bullet to Hell. Then you go now to Passion, Pain, Demon, Slam. I feel like the evolution into his albums are really wild. I, I love just the progress you can see. Kid Cudi coming from, like, you can see him basically understanding, taking on his demons. And then you can also feel the passion in certain tracks. And then you can also hear the pain. And, so, and, and then the, you can also hear the growth, as in uh, uh my other favorite track, uh, you fucking with these new niggas. Uh, uh, you blue. <laughs> He's like, the, also, um, the perks once a day in an awesome nigga. Can't match my energy ever. <laughs> like, like, that's my shit. <laughs> like, that's my shit. Like, that's my shit. As, if you guys don't know, man, I love music, man. One thing I can say that for me and why I also grow and why I'm kind of scared to do the Man on the Moon 1 album review is because I'm so passionate and so connected to the music that I honestly kind of just don't want to be on camera for certain ways I might feel every time I listen to certain tracks, right? And I think that the, the that same passion is exactly why I'm still five years later able to make a living and do shit and do this music shit because at the end of the day, I'm being genuine, man. I'm just being myself. I, I can't fake being myself. This is who I am, right? And I think that that's why I fucked with Cuddy so much because in, in like between Pharrell, the Thundercats, Kid Cuddy was basically, and Pharrell were initially... You know, it was okay to be yourself. It was okay to be that quirky, weird guy. It was okay to be different and not and not care what everybody else thought about you. I think now a lot of people are trying to do that because it is the cool thing to do. It is the cool thing now to be different. And I think a lot of people are starting to understand this trend that kind of just not, not saying Cuddy started it, but, you know, Cuddy was one of the innovators of that, right? And I think that's why I just connect with Cuddy so much because at the end of the day, I'm going to be myself. Cuddy's being himself. Happy Happy dude, loves himself, sometimes gets sad, he's human, he fucks with that. Man on the Moon 3, uh, the only thing, I'll, this is the only thing I, I'll have a problem with, right? I'm, I'm really, I, the title brings so much, it weighs so much, right? That title, because when you're calling it Man on the Moon 3, for as legendary as Man on the Moon 1 and 2 were in your discography, you now have to live up to that hype. And I think a lot of people's standards will be very high because they're going to base that album off of a 2010, 2009 album, right? And I don't think that's really fair because this been it was just 10 years ago, right? It's not going to be the same Man on the Moon. That's why I always say that Passion, Pain, Demon Slaying could have been Man on the Moon 3 because if you think about it, if he would have released, if he would have released Passion, Pain at the time after Man on the Moon 2, it probably would have been one of his best albums ever and it probably would have been as loved because... Just because an album is great and it is received well, it is also all about timing and place, right? Because the thing is, if you don't, re if you can have one of the best rap albums ever, but if it releases at the time where Lil Wayne, perfect example, Lupe Fiasco, if the Carter Three is releasing that year, then obviously the cool is going to get overlooked, right? <laughs> it's, it's just how it is, right? And people will kind of forget your your legacy and forget. So it's all about a time and a place type thing. And I feel like at the hype. And at the peak of his career that he was at Man on the Moon 2. And at the time featuring with Kanye dropping a kid named Cuddy. I think that at that time, if you would have dropped a Passion, Pain, Demon, Slaying, it probably would have been one of the best albums ever in his discography. Probably one of the best albums of the last decade, in my opinion, right? Now, if you don't feel it, I understand that. But again, listen to the lyrics. Understand the story. Understand the growth. Understand where Kid Cuddy is coming from. Understand being in the same shoes of being drug abused. Swimming a lot, you know, you can't really get away from the pain and like the same old tricks don't work no more. Pause, like, <laughs> we'll just play this part. That's because, hopefully I don't get copyrighted. 
Oh, now I gotta edit the fucking video, man. So this line right here is my favorite line from the album. Passion Pain, Demon Slaying will be the first on my videos that I have to do albums that I slept on. I will start that series soon. I know I've been slacking. I got a new computer. I will show you guys at the end of the video. But um, I'm, I'm just, I'm, I have been slacking, but it's okay. But this right here, this, this swim in the light, like this line right here, I think is what. Dark. I got hope in my eyes. No help inside. I feel like that track right there is kind of just like what people, when they go to church and they're getting. Um, I've been to church before and you're receiving the Holy Spirit. I feel like that's the Cuddy Spirit, right? Mm -hmm. And you sit there and you really understand the pain and the fact that you can't fight off addiction. No matter what, the same old tricks don't work no more. You know, he's trying to, <laughs> I'm a swim in the line. You, you'll never get away. I, I always tell people like that, like the fact that you try to cure your addiction, the fact that you try to, you know, better yourself, try to fight it off no matter what at the end of the day the demons always come back at that point you're not getting rid of your demons at that point you're literally living with your demons that's what you're doing you're not getting away you're just living you know you're handling them you're understanding how to handle them that's kind of what i call anxiety it's a demon it's something that never goes away and at first since you're never used to it it, it overcomes you. It takes you by surprise. It takes you by storm. And then you start tripping and whatnot because you're not used to it. But as the time goes on and you fight the demons, you fight the anxiety, you find ways not to not to get it away because it never goes away, but to kind of just understand like, okay, I'm fine. Hey, take a deep breath. Relax. I'm good. Oh, I'm tripping right now? Nah, I just know it's a trip. I know it's tripping. I'm good. Like, you understand how to live with the demons. So, Honestly, the only thing I have the problem with is Kid Cudi living up to the hype of Man on the Moon 3. Other than that, I'm really excited. Hopefully, we get it before the end of 2020, but I would not be mad if we got it in 2021 at some point because as long as he takes his time, I know Intergalactic is supposed to come next year as well, and we're supposed to get the Netflix series. So that, we have that. Uh, I'm just I'm just hyped, man. You guys know I love Cudi, man. You guys know I love his music. I love, uh, uh, you know, I just love his persona, and I think that right there, we're going to have um, something special. We're going to have something special. Now... Uh, I've been talking for 12 minutes, so I think I'm going to split this video up, and I'm going to talk about Drake in another video. So, uh, with that being said, man, um, get in the comment box below, man, what you think about Man on the Moon 3. Let me know what do you think that Cuddy is going to do um, with this project. Like, what do you think that uh, he's going to go into with this? Like, what, is it going to be his happy place like surfing? Is it going to be a dark place like swimming in the light? Is it going to be a bop uh, like baptizing fire? You know, is it going to be a flex like distant fantasies? Like, let me know what kind of... What kind of mindset is Kit Cudi going to be in on Man in the Moon 3? Because I'm quite curious. But shout out to all my uh, Cudi Zone, man, on Twitter, man. Shout out to my dude, Mike, biggest Cudi fan out there, man. Shout out to all my dudes, E-Money, man. Thank you guys for supporting, man. Again, like I always said, man, the one thing, if you're going to start a YouTube channel, man, the one thing, if you're going to start any business, man, stop worrying about the million subscribers. Worry about your own growth. Do not worry about other people's growth. That you know, Even if you got one subscriber a day or if you get 10,000 subscribers a day, increase is increase, man. I'm going to tell you right now, the main number you're focusing on is 10,000, 1,000, 10,000. Don't focus on the million, all right? That's the high 1%. Focus on the 1,000. The 10,000 can carry you to do what you love and to finance you, you know, and to financially help you to do whatever you want and allow you to freely be a creator in this shit and understand that, all right? I always tell you guys, a dollar in a dream. If you have people, 10,000 people, you gave you $1, you'll have $10,000 a month. Remember that. So with that being said, man, get in the comments below. Let me know what good stuff. I'm just going to what you're here. Until next time, man, we out. I'm excited. Peace. I'm gonna let you go.